But what if I tell you there's no art involved whatsoever? What you gonna say about that? I try to. Like, what if we're in there? I'm interested in that. Like, it's just, uh... Even if it's the most uncomfortable three hours of your life, you still down with it? Yeah, I mean, I gotta do something to change things. So, uh, you gotta break the comfort zone out. Oh yeah, I like how you talking, breaking that comfort zone, becoming a better person. I like to talk. Yo, I can't tell you that you're going to get in, but I'm going to tell you that I'll try my best, and I hope it work out for you. Oh, thank you very much for calling. I'm sorry I had trouble. I would say that it was an immersive... Wait. Ah! Wait. Samples. It, it, it was an art show. The rescuer cat yogurt. It's hard to explain this shit. There's <laughs> my Asian brother. Thanks, David Show. I am going to paint you today. What? Like yeah. body paint on me? I mean, if you want me to body paint, <laughs> I can do that. <laughs> this is the bucket of water. Do you okay. want to spit in here? Spit? Yeah. Oh. Is All that right. like give it magic or something? It's just you, part of you in here. <laughs> um. My name is Kashana Perfected. I am an actress slash comedian that's based here in the greater Los Angeles area. Yeah. My favorite color. Yeah. I don't have one. All right, well, just close your eyes and, and what's the first color that comes to mind? Okay. I'm going to say lime. Lime, okay, cool, yeah. I like that. The way it was on L.A. Casting, it said that it was a live event. And I never applied for live events. But I saw it said plus size and thought, you know, I always know I have a better chance booking a gig if it's for a plus size performer. The Cho Show was a new experience of where I was trying to express myself and where I was coming from. And with that, I needed actors. So I booked the gig. I had sat out there for a while and all these people were going in and out. And they would just come out of the audition like, wow, that was intense. So I'm thinking, it looks like a lot of people are auditioning for this role. So I need to turn it all the way up. Wait, oh, what, what is going on? Oh, my God! Oh, my God, Bobby! When Dave and I would do, you know, various skits, it would be, like, so fun. So, anyway, at the audition, I was really off the chain, which is weird because I'm usually not that loose and saying the things that came out of my mouth. So, there's been someone else besides this guy? I was a virgin until I was 34 years old. My canal is not deep enough for black guys. I need an Asian. That's actually, all right, that makes sense to me. <laughs> Thank you, Dad. I approve. <laughs> why Why didn't you have sexual relations till you were 34? I didn't have sexual relations until I was 34 because I was a good Southern girl. I was raised that, you know, you don't have sex until you're married. As a teenager, it was hard because oh, I was pressured a lot. I had friends that were really promiscuous, so, and she would end up screwing in the back room, and I'm fighting off a guy all night, you know, off of me. But, um, I. What, what was that like? It was just like, you know, like, Come on, I baby. would want to do it, but I would clam up, like, right before. They're in the next room and they're doing it, we in your dad's bed. I don't want to do this in your dad's bed. Like, that's not right. That's not right. That's not And I did not wait until I was married, but I was ready. I was a grown woman, yeah. called my mama, you know. My mom told me, asked me, well, you have the atmosphere right? I was like, what are you talking about? She told me, go buy candles, go buy this, go buy that. <laughs> you know, it's a production. So tell me what that's like to, to wait 34 years and then to finally do it. Is it like everything you thought it was going to be? Is it like a letdown? Is it... Disappointing the first time. Oh, it, it was, it, it was, you know what? 
the first time it was um, just a beautiful experience, beautiful place, and all that kind of stuff. You did know, he know you were a virgin? He did not. Oh. And I didn't tell him till the next day. He got really mad at me, and I never saw him again. God sees. God knows. He is inside of me, okay? As a child dealing with issues with my parents, my mom was a single mom, and then my dad got married when I was in fourth grade. And so as a child, it was just hard for me to process all of this. I was feeling abandonment, you know, just not feeling that I was priority to either of my parents then all these new people coming in. So it was just a lot to process, yeah. yeah. For me, my trauma was rejection from both parents. Even though we have a great relationship now, but that was the main thing because that spawned into so many different things like making me an emotional eater. It makes you choose bad relationships and friendships because you're trying to either give out to them what you never got from your parents, or you're trying to be a caregiver. That was me. I had been in so much pain that I wanted to caregive for everyone else. The pain of being rejected. The pain of being rejected. So tired. Oh, so fast. Hey, 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 This is where I'm comfortable. Like I can do this shit without even looking and it's fun for me. Painting is a solitary sport. I just, I don't need anyone besides just me and a brush in a room. Mm -hmm. um, when I'm hiring actors, in my mind, I just imagine these gifted people that will just do anything. Mm -hmm. I needed someone to play, not necessarily my parents, but like an archetype of my parents. In the course of a week, I had at least 50 older Asian actors come in to play my parents. When you're playing my parents, I need you to act oppositely of what they did. I need you to pretend like you care. Mm -hmm. Pretend, that's your job. <laughs> pretend like you care. These can't even pretend like they care. <laughs> so she comes in, she starts hitting people, she starts screaming, she starts like sla I mean, I'm like, oh, she'll do anything. This is my soulmate right here. When David came to me, just pulled me out of the office one day to do a test run because his friend came over from Australia. I think the friend talked about how I connected with him and he connected with me. I guess that was like the light bulb went off in David's head to use this African-American woman to be an Asian mother, <laughs> you know? And that Sam and I worked together. <laughs> Once I did that that day with Sam, it was a done deal. He came into my office and sat down and, you know, told me he really wanted me to do it. I appreciated that David trusted me to do that role. People coming to the show are going to have an opportunity to confront their parents and tell them the things that they needed to say or wanted to say and never got to say mm -hmm. and then I need someone who's just a natural empath a natural loving caring person and and so Krishana sits in a room pretending to be everyone's parents that comes in that room and for the course of a month we had about 2,000 people come in unloading their shit onto this beautiful woman fuck you mom mommy fucking bitch drinking all night so I had to walk out and get a little air. We had a lot of people that shared, people who had been abandoned by their mother, another whose parents haven't supported her, another who's on a journey of forgiveness with both parents. What was that like for one month to have 2,000 people come through the house, sit with you, mm -hmm. and just unload all their emotional baggage onto you? It was just a show that it's not real. <laughs> You're, you're, you're a good person. You, you're a great mother. It was the most... I, I tell people today that, my, the, that the gig I booked was the most amazing job I've booked since moving to L.A. 
so man, it was very challenging. I must say shout out to my co-star, Sam. We helped each other a lot through that, who played the dad. Filter it, pass it through, it's not my shit. Own it, get out. Not only was it grueling mentally and emotionally, but you guys did take care of us as far as having a therapist come in and anything we requested, we got it. We had a therapist, we had sound baths every night up on the seventh floor that we could de-stress. You know, Sam and I was able to go get massages. I would poke my head in the room and be like, is everyone, is everyone in here okay? And I would, I would see this. <laughs> Sam would be on the floor. I would be crying because, you know, the things, you think that your life is hard, but then when you find out within two minutes, sharing things that they've never shared with anyone before. I love doing this more than anything. And I don't want this to be over, but at the same time, I need a break and I can't keep doing this. Sam got sick one night. Dave substituted during one of the shows, and it was funny because he was crying so much. I remember, like, tapping him because I'm tapping him because I know that it's time for this group to leave out our room. But he thought I was tapping him to grab my hand, so he's grabbing my hand and crying and about to break my damn hand. Yeah, I'm trying to, you know not get my hand broken hey, off and this is space. my first time doing it <laughs> give me a, give me a break you did good hey you created this experience chill out chill out chill out baby chill out this is our show there's a kitchen here mm -hmm. let's use it what do you do in the kitchen you make food chop vegetables mm -hmm. there's sinks you wash your hands whatever yeah so jesus story came up to me i don't think of myself as jesus he he i don't did he have a kitchen the show show ends and this is what the actors look like the traumatized audience members that went through the show had just sucked the life force out of them. It's been great today. Yeah. It makes me really sad. I thought of, yeah, yeah. I feel bad. Mm -hmm. Maybe I shouldn't, but I do. I was like, I didn't lie to anyone. Everyone knew what they were getting into. Mm -hmm. I'm filled with all the feelings. And yet I feel horrible because no one could predict this level of, I didn't know that it was going to go down like that. Yeah. And remember, when the therapist came and saw what we were doing, like, this is some crazy shit. Can I wash your foot with my hair and my beard? Are you open? <laughs> That's crazy. I, 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 no, I, would, I wouldn't be open to that. <laughs> and I gather the actors that had dealt with the brunt of the worst of it, mm -hmm. and I offered to them, if you are willing to go to an intense, right, like going to see a therapist once a week, that's not going to do it. Right. Here is some options if you're open to it. Mm -hmm. There's fear there of like, I'm going to let go of this mm -hmm. ledge to possibly jump to another ledge and maybe I might slip. Right. And so I was surprised that you went. Because oh, really? most, most people say, cool, cool, mm -hmm. Dave, thanks, but no thanks. I have forgiven my parents but still, you know, I could feel that something, that inner fight within myself. And what it was is that I never went back and healed that little girl that got hurt, that was abandoned. During that seven days of therapy, they really give you the tools to be able to heal that inner child. That's why I didn't even know, you know, yeah. it was the inner child that needed healing. That is what I've needed all these years. You've seen so much in the last year. You've seen so much pain, mm -hmm. so much suffering, and you can't watch that shit and not be affected right. unless you're dead already. Mm -hmm. And that's what happened. That, to me, was the surprise of not even going through the art show experience, but the people that work there. Because mm -hmm. they see it every day. They're like, wow, that sounds like my story. Yeah. So I don't envy your situation at all. <laughs> I, 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 I've done that. I, I came home and I was like, I'm going to have to throw down some hard boundaries with my family. Right yeah. Now. And I've never done yeah. that before. So they're like, mm -hmm. who the fuck is this guy? People are always going to disappoint me. Mm -hmm. But myself, make myself proud and don't disappoint myself. If I do, it's a learning process, you know, and I don't have to <sighs> just, oh, everything is over. No, I'm just beginning. 
now I can really start to, you know, yeah. do better things for myself. So. Yeah. Kushana, I want to reveal to you, and I'm sure everyone here will agree, mm -hmm. the best painting I've done so far in this interviewing <laughs> show. Okay. Check it out. Okay. Oh my gosh. I love it. You are worthy. You are beautiful. You deserve love. And it won't be like this always. Yeah, the most amazing gig that I've booked, but yeah. I can't even talk about it because yeah. I'm still on that gang order. Yeah. <laughs>